Three years ago, my wife Courtney and Kevin and I seemed to live for art. We weren't pretentious at all, or at least I hope we weren't. We just loved art of almost any type. Dutch cityscapes, primitive African sculptures, pre-Columbian masks, the fantasies of Salvador Dali, we really liked all this. Our home was decorated with the best art we could afford, and we visited art shows and museums at least once a month, and usually once every two weeks. We were members of the circles of two nearby art galleries and attended every private exhibition, opening day and gala evening they offered, and even traveled to New York and Washington for special exhibitions. We had many good friends who shared our interests. Although Courtney and I had many other interests during the eight years that Courtney and I were married, although not as common as art and other groups of friends, our friends in the art community were the closest. In fact, with one exception, we'd rather hang out with our artist friends than with anyone else. The only exception is Tom's second wife, Katrina. I tried to please Katrina for Tom's sake. However, it was really difficult. She seemed uneducated, did not appreciate most classical works of art, including masters such as Monet and Van Gogh, and constantly made flippant comments about works that other members of our group found fascinating. Our group members had many conversations about how Tom could get along with her. However, there was one discussion that the male members of our group never discussed, why he married her. Katrina is a gorgeous woman, like a sultry tropical breeze on a cool winter day. Although her face is only slightly prettier than average, and she dresses relatively conservatively. However, while this story was just beginning, Tom's patience with its simplicity seemed to have run out, despite its beautiful appearance. He publicly criticized her on several occasions, which led to some unpleasant situations that required my expertise to resolve. I am a professional mediator and negotiator, and I really enjoy transferring my work experience into my personal life. However, when it came to Tom and Katrina, even though my stress-relieving actions always worked in the end, I never received any recognition, let alone gratitude, from any of them, although the rest of our group expressed gratitude. Despite my concerns about Katrina, I was always kind to her, and she to me, in one-on-one -on -one situations, although there were few such meetings. Largest local art gallery noted its 50th anniversary. It featured an exhibition of paintings by Jean Myro and rare lithographs collected from around the world, including the original of perhaps his most famous painting, the incongruously titled Sculptures. This gallery was also famous for providing food and drink that was second to none at all the parties, and this event promised to be the best in history. I was really looking forward to visiting it. About a week before the event, Katrina called Courtney. Apparently, she was in a tearful mood. Tom was going out of town on business, and the event was on a Wednesday night. But for some reason, Katrina really wanted to attend. According to Courtney, Katrina struck her with a phrase, I know that most of the members of your group consider me simple and boring, but I try my best to fit into the group, and you and Kevin are the most tolerant of them. Could I please give you two a ride? Uh, sure, Courtney replied not knowing what to say. This obviously made Katrina very happy. Uh, Kevin, Courtney told me shortly after, with a shy look on her face. It was Katrina. Tom will be out of town for his 50th birthday party, and she wanted to give me a ride. I couldn't refuse her. Oh shit, I muttered. I think I'll have to take some pills to calm down, or get very drunk. Or maybe both. Don't be so gloomy, Courtney chuckled. She spoke well of us and said that she was trying her best to join the team and learn more about art. Myro should be an excellent teacher. Really? I asked cynically, raising an eyebrow. Behave yourself. Courtney laughed and poked me in the side. I had just about gotten used to Courtney and me taking turns interacting with Katrina at the gala when the other shoe dropped a few days later. Kevin, dear, Courtney exclaimed. Whenever she said, darling, it meant that I wouldn't like what she said next. What? I answered with a dissatisfied look. You know how much I want to go to the celebration, but something happened at work, and in order to develop my career, I simply need to leave the city from Wednesday morning until late Friday evening. I'm really sorry, she said. The first question popped into my head. 
Will John Bates go on this trip? I asked in an unpleasant voice. Yes, together with two other people, was her awkward answer, as if making excuses. However, she quickly pulled herself together and asked in a joking tone, although I did not find it funny, why are you always so worried about him? Because he, figuratively speaking, has a male interest in you. That's why, I answered decisively. Oh, Kevin, you're getting it all wrong. Really, Courtney? Then why does he always try to slow dance with you at every company event, or that time we saw him and his supposed girlfriend at the Passion Fruit nightclub? How did he know we would be there? We've discussed this many times, she said somewhat irritably. It was just a coincidence, and he also dances with other women. Only fast dancing, and besides, I didn't like his comment last time when I told him I only slow dance with you, I grumbled. He was just joking, she snorted. I didn't find it funny, I retorted. Oh, honey, don't be jealous, she cooed. You know that you are much more beautiful than him. I did think I looked a lot better, and I knew I could kick his ass just by putting my hand behind my back, but I also knew that women in general, and Courtney in particular, view appearance differently than men. Her last boyfriend before we got married seven years ago was a lot like John, and she seemed to be in love with him until he foolishly dumped her and then unsuccessfully tried to win her back. Still offended, I asked, Do you really need to go on this trip? Yes, honey, we need it. You can call Brad if you don't believe me, she replied conciliatory. Brad is the CEO of her company and an honest man. I was muttering something under my breath when Courtney hugged me. Then a whole new problem popped up in my brain. I carefully moved Courtney to arm's length and blurted out, Are you going to call Katrina and tell her she can't come with us because you're not coming? Why should I do this? Courtney asked after a short pause with a puzzled expression on her face. You're still walking, aren't you? She can still go with you. I relied on you to take the pressure off me in dealing with her puzzling questions and behavior. Now I have to go it alone, I grumbled. Our other friends will be there too. Be a gentleman, Kevin. Like I said, she's trying to change. Maybe it'll be fun. Yes, most likely, I groaned. You're always touching the bottle, aren't you? Courtney grinned. Let me calm you down yours frayed nerves, she continued. I agreed. It was not easy for me to fall asleep that evening. I was still angry about her business trip with John and the fact that I had to deal with Katrina alone, since I was sure that our friends would hardly be able to help me. Eventually, I fell into a restless sleep. I was so concerned that I finally called Brad two days later. I knew him quite well from working at the company and had even played doubles tennis with him a couple of times when his regular partner couldn't make it to tournaments at his country club. I tried not to be too nosy or conspicuous, and I think I was mostly successful because I started the conversation by asking him if he knew how to get tickets to the next match of the local world team tennis club. He confirmed that Courtney did need to go, but that only she and John would go and no one else. However, this decision was made recently, so perhaps she was not lying. I was still offended. I decided to suppress my anxiety about him and John being alone for two nights. In addition, now I was faced with another alarming situation. I myself took Katrina to the gala concert. I called Katrina around noon on Wednesday, hoping that I might be able to cancel an escort to the gala, although I was planning to go anyway, but she was so excited about it that I would be a real idiot to cancel the appointment with her. I'm looking forward to seeing the Miro exhibition with someone knowledgeable who won't constantly put me down like Tom does, she blurted out at one point. I prepared myself for a difficult evening, but vowed to do my best. The event was a formal suit, so I wore a tuxedo. When I picked up Katrina, she was wearing an elegant electric blue, floor-length, strapless, sleeveless, backless, off-the-shoulder dress with an almost thigh-length slit on the left side. Around her neck was a bright sapphire necklace, and on her left wrist was a discreet sapphire bracelet. You look great, I said honestly. Thank you. You are the most beautiful penguin I have ever seen, she grinned in response. The small talk on the way to the gallery was a little tense, 
but once we got there, ate a few oysters, shrimp, and vegetables, and drank two generous glasses of wine, our conversation flowed much more smoothly. As we toured the Miro exhibition, Katrina bombarded us with questions and comments. Katrina was not particularly impressed by the spike, Miro's early work. When Miro was a young artist, he was influenced by the realism of the Dutch masters. Appreciate the attention he pays to the objects here because it will be reflected in his later work, where he creates clear biomorphic forms in his signature style. I explained to Katrina as we looked at it, trying to be as little pompous as possible. In my opinion, this is a bad still life, Katrina grinned, finishing her second glass of white wine. They don't serve red in the galleries. I might need another glass if they all look like this, she grinned, holding out her glass. The way she said it was actually funny, and since I don't like ears either, I smiled back and brought her another glass. When I caught up with her, she was thoughtfully watching, a beautiful bird revealing the unknown to a pair of lovers. Thank you, Kevin, she blurted out, her gaze lingering on my hand for a long time as she carefully took glass from my hand. It's really hard work. I can't fully understand why this is happening, she said. More sophisticated art patrons than I, I answered cheerfully, believe that in this work Myro used a solid background, emphasizing simplified shapes and lines that together imitate the appearance of a complex constellation in the night sky. Some believe that at the time he painted this painting, the atmosphere of crowds and chaos echoed Myro's own feelings about the violent upheaval in Europe at the time, he wrote it while he and his family were fleeing. Wow, Katrina giggled. She remained thoughtful for some time and then remarked, I see it. Thank you, Kevin. You're a fucking genius. I laughed. I'll just take genius. I don't need damn superlatives. She hugged me sincerely and naturally. I actually had a good time playing tour guide for Katrina while we toured the rest of the collection. Instead of being stupid or asinine, most of her comments were humorous or thoughtful, and some were even insightful. This was despite the fact that I generously poured her a fourth glass of wine. Katrina's best comments were saved for last about Myro's composition called Motherhood. Is this really a woman? Katrina giggled after looking at the work for a couple of minutes while finishing her fourth glass of wine. Yes, that's true, I chuckled. Obviously, this is very schematic and reduced to its simplest form. That's what the experts say, I answered with a grin. Presumably, this is what was left after he removed all the extraneous images. Simply the instinctive and emotional aspects of the mother-child relationship that can be not obvious on more naturalistic illustrations. I think she's pretty cute, Katrina grinned. But I have to say that I could show you some art in my house that is much more aesthetically pleasing. They say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I quoted. Yes, but the work of art that I can show you in my house, in your opinion, is much more beautiful and impressive than anything in this collection, she grinned. We met some of our friends. We had a very pleasant conversation, in which Katrina participated enthusiastically and winked at me every time she repeated one of my comments. By 2130 everything began to disperse. Katrina went to powder her nose, and I, secluded in a niche, called Courtney on my cell phone. The use of cell phones in the gallery is frowned upon, if not expressly prohibited, so I had to be in a secluded, inaccessible area. Well, at least I tried calling Courtney. My call was immediately forwarded to voicemail. I left a cheerful message telling her that the evening had actually been fun and not the complete disaster I had feared and asked her to call me any time. On the way home, it became clear that Katrina was inappropriate, although she was also clearly not so drunk that she was not in control of her feelings. I was quite surprised by one of her early comments along the way. I may not have told you this before, Kevin, but I really have to thank you for all the times you got me out of awkward situations when Tom made derogatory comments. I really appreciate it. I, uh, I hoped I was helpful, I muttered, slightly taken aback by the sincerity of her remark. She continued sincerely, I must also thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so kind to me this evening. I bet you were looking forward to it with trepidation, but I hope it wasn't too terrible for you. 
Again, I faltered a little as I answered, Actually, I had fun tonight. Hope you had a nice time. At that moment, the bright lights of a passing car reflected off her azure eyes and sapphire necklace at the same time, a truly beautiful sight. I had a wonderful time, she cooed. When we got to her house, she took me by the right hand and asked casually, Would you like to see what works of art I have at home that, in the opinion of almost everyone, deserve more praise than Myro's motherhood? It was a little after twenty-two, Zud, and I never went to bed before midnight, even on weekdays. Of course, I answered. Let me open the door for you. I hurried to the passenger side of the car and opened the door for Katrina, gently taking her hand to make it easier for her to get out of the car. I helped her with the keys. She closed the curtains in her living room and excused herself and left. I have to stop before I show you the works of art that I am so proud of, she smiled. Can I get you something to drink? I think I had enough at the party, I replied. I still need to go home. Oh, don't worry. By then you will be completely sober. If you change your mind, the bar is over there, she said, pointing to the small bar between the living room and kitchen. I'll be back soon, she said and disappeared somewhere in the depths of the first floor. I walked around the living room, looking at the pictures on the walls, and made another call to Courtney's cell phone. It went back to voicemail. I left a short message, call me back. I was a little confused, but shrugged my shoulders and continued looking at the compositions on the walls. I had only been to Tom's house once before, when he was married to his first wife. It seemed to me that much of the work had changed since then. I liked some, but none of them were good enough to excite me, and certainly nothing much more beautiful and dramatic than Myro's work, as Katrina promised at the gallery. She's probably taking a painting or sculpture from her bedroom. It randomly occurred to me as I continued to look at the paintings on the walls of the living room. Then I heard a noise to my left. I turned around just as Katrina walked into the living room, smiling. She was wearing the same high heels, a sapphire necklace, and a sapphire ankle bracelet, and nothing else. I'm lucky I didn't pick up a drink at the bar because I probably would have dropped it. Now tell me honestly, is Kevin a work of art? Is it more beautiful and dramatic than anything you've seen in marble or on canvas? She asked rhetorically, demonstratively moving her hands, and at the same time smoothly turning a full 360 degrees. I was stunned, speechless, and dumbfounded by what I saw. There was no doubt that Katrina's body was the best I had ever seen, in person or in the media. To be honest, I don't quite understand how what happened next happened, and I also don't know what was going through my head. Was it something other than animal desire? I don't know if I was thinking about Courtney or why my calls were going to voicemail. I don't know if images of Tom flashed through my mind. After a wonderful 9 a.m. breakfast of blueberry pancakes and sausage pies that Katrina cooked and served, my brain started working again for the first time since the gala ended. Many thoughts were spinning in my head, like why Courtney never called me back. How lucky Tom was, but why didn't he appreciate the unsurpassed work of art standing in front of me? If I didn't have an important mediation starting at 11 a.m., and given the need to get home and change into my tuxedo, I would stay all morning. Katrina, would you like to have dinner with me tonight? I think we need to discuss something, I said, getting up from the table. I can cook us dinner here, she said with a smile. Let me take you somewhere. When do you have a day off? You got me, she laughed, and I have a flexible schedule, so I take the day off. How about six o'clock in the evening, I asked. Then you'll pick me up, she giggled. I hope you can stay the night again. This is one of the topics we'll talk about, I smiled. Courtney finally, very awkwardly, called me on my cell phone around 10.50 a.m., just as I was getting ready to start the mediation I was conducting. I told her I couldn't talk, but didn't ask why she hadn't called me the night before, which seemed to calm her down somewhat. I asked her to call me in the evening. Despite the lack of sleep, I was very good at mediation. I successfully negotiated a deal that both parties could agree to by 4 p.m., and even managed to take a hot shower and an hour's nap before picking up Katrina. When I stopped by Katrina, 
She was wearing a yellow sundress that seemed to have been made especially for her. She was in high spirits. At dinner we talked about anything but art. I was surprised at how good she was at music, tennis, and hockey. She was a violin prodigy, but her career was cut short by a serious injury. She suffered playing women's hockey when she was a teenager. When she recovered, she learned to play the piano, but abandoned any aspirations for a professional music career. In college, she became interested in event planning and has now found great success. When we returned to her house, I walked her to the door. We still have a lot to talk about that we couldn't talk about in the restaurant, she smiled. Then she laughed and continued, Come into my living room, the spider said to the fly. When we walked into her living room, she sat down next to me on the couch. Kevin, I have a confession to make. I've wanted this for a long time, but I didn't have this opportunity until last night. Let me be completely honest. I want to get rid of Tom and I want to be with you. Especially after last night. She stunned me once again. I didn't know if my feelings for her, which had changed 180 degrees in 24 hours, were real or stable, but I wanted to find out. Can you take a day off from work tomorrow? I asked. I'll do it if you want, she grinned. Let's do another 24-hour compatibility test. My phone was on the whole time. Courtney never called. When Katrina and I parted late Friday night, I said, I have a lot to think about. What about you? I should have played at least a little touchy-feely, she grinned, but I have nothing to think about. I'll just have to wait to see what you think about it. When I got home early Friday evening, Courtney was already there. She had an expression on her face that I couldn't fully decipher. Something between thoughtfulness, bewilderment, and fear. Where have you been, honey? She asked. At Katrina's house. Oh, why? I think she wants to end her marriage to Tom. Have you talked to her about this? Yes. By the way, I never heard from you about your trip. Were there any problems? Oh, ah, uh, well, we were just very busy, sorry. But, ah, uh, everything went really well. We got the contract we were hoping for, so I'm sure Brad will be happy. Look, there might be some things we need to talk about. You're right, but let's put it off until tomorrow. We spent the rest of the evening chatting over dinner, watching a movie on Netflix, and then going to bed. Saturday morning, I went on a 50km bike ride while Courtney went to her gym. We met at home for lunch, showered, and then sat down together. Ah, uh, darling, while I was away, something happened, she began. Yes, of course, I giggled. The next four months were not pleasant, but at least Katrina and I had never been more determined than we were then. Courtney and Tom seemed to vacillate between trying to make things work and ending their marriages, but Katrina and I put an end to their vacillation by renting an apartment and moving in together within six weeks. Once the divorces were finalized and Courtney and Tom bought out our shares in the houses, Katrina and I bought a house together and were soon married. I don't know about Courtney and Tom, but I never looked back. Now, three years after the gala, I am still living the dream. I couldn't be happier. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.